This tutorial looks at how salt is extracted commercially and also how that salt can be processed by electrolysis in order to make useful uh, industrial chemicals. We'll also look at how mining can cause subsidence, for example, in Cheshire. And uh, at higher level, we'll look at the electrolysis of sodium chloride in more detail and what happens at each of those electrodes. Britain is fortunate and it has its own underground deposits of salt. These are in Cheshire and they're the remains of an ancient sea which dried up and was then overlaid by other rocks. There are two methods for extracting salt from underground which are mining as shown here and solution mining. Mining is only done for rock salt, which is grit, um, which is spread on roads in the winter to melt the ice and snow. This contains not only salt, but also some sand grains, which would have been in the sea, which dried up. Salt for the food industry is mined in a cheaper way, and that's by solution mining. Here, water is pumped underground under pressure. It then dissolves the rock salt and the salt comes back up to the surface as a solution which can then either be sold directly to industry for various chemical processes such as electrolysis but also can be filtered, have various minerals extracted and then be crystallized to be sold as salt for adding to food. This method is much cheaper and safer than mining and therefore it's used for the large scale extraction of salt which doesn't have to be in the form of grit. One of the issues with any kind of mining and salt mining in particular is subsidence. Subsidence is where a mine underground, be it solution mine or a extraction mine, uh, has collapsed and that has taken the land down with it and for example in this area of Cheshire there's a dip there where there has been subsidence. Here a more extreme example in one of the salt mining towns where buildings have started subsiding into a hole in the ground caused by a collapsed salt mine. Large-scale salt mining in America has caused this particular substance, an enormous hole uh, in the ground caused when a salt mine collapsed, so large that it couldn't possibly be filled in, and as you can see, the railway has had to be diverted around it. A good deal of the salt solution, or brine, which is uh, extracted by solution mining, is used in an industrial process to make various chemicals, chlorine, hydrogen and sodium hydroxide. This process, called electrolysis, can be shown in the lab using this equipment here. Sodium chloride solution, or salt solution, contains two ions, the sodium ion and the chloride ion. Whereas water can also split up into ions when stuff is dissolved in it. They're the hydrogen ions and the hydroxide ions. These four ions float around in solution. However, when two electrodes are added, the positive anode and the negative cathode, and the electric supply is switched on with a direct current, those ions start migrating towards the oppositely charged electrode. The electrodes are made of carbon in the lab, or could be made out of platinum. Uh, it has to be an inert substance because any steel, for example, would react with the salt. Now, when we first look at the anode, the anode will attract two ions. The negative ions, that's the chloride ion and the hydroxide ion, whereas the cathode will attract the two positive ions, that's the hydrogen ion and the sodium ion. Dealing with the cathode first, Sodium can't be made in solution, so instead the hydrogen ion gets involved in electrolysis. The hydrogen ions come up to the cathode, the negative electrode, and here they pick up two electrons. Two hydrogen ions pick up two electrons to make hydrogen 
atoms which join together to make hydrogen gas molecules, which bubble off and are collected. You can test for that hydrogen gas by the fact that it pops with a lighted splint. At the anode, the two negative electrodes, the hydroxide and the chloride ion, are uh, attracted. Here, it's the chloride ion which is discharged. Two chloride ions each lose an electron each and become chlorine molecules which are released as chlorine gas. The chlorine gas can be tested by the chlorine bleaching damp litmus paper. Now, during that electrolysis, the two ions which are discharged, uh, they are the chloride ion and the hydrogen ion, get used up in the mixture. That means that the mixture becomes depleted in hydrogen ions and chloride ions, leaving sodium ions and hydroxide ions in the solution. The solution therefore becomes more concentrated in sodium hydroxide, and this sodium hydroxide can be tested by the fact that it turns red litmus blue. Sodium hydroxide is an alkali, remember. Finally, we can think of electrolysis as being a redox reaction. When we look at the two half equations at the cathode and the anode, we can see, first of all, at the cathode, hydrogen ions are gaining electrons to make hydrogen gas. Now, reduction is gain, so this reaction involves reduction. At the anode, chloride ions each lose electrons to make chlorine. Oxidation is loss, so this describes oxidation happening at the anode. The laboratory method for uh, electrolyzing concentrated brine is a batch process, but in industry they use this continuous process. It uses still a positive anode and a negative cathode and the two gases are discharged at the places that we've seen before. So chloride ions discharged at the anode and hydrogen at the cathode. However, brine is constantly pumped into the cell and so that the cell doesn't fill up on one side, there's a membrane in between the two sections. The ions can pass through that membrane but chloride ions are discharged at the positive electrode. All the other ions are able to pass through the sodium, the hydroxide and the hydrogen ions. Hydrogen is made at the negative electrode and the two remaining ions, the sodium ion and the hydroxide ion, are pumped out of the right hand side. So again we get the three products, chlorine, hydrogen and sodium hydroxide. Here again, inert electrodes are used. Here, they're made out of titanium. If you use steel ones, they'd react with the salt solution and corrode.